The season finale of Young Sheldon is way darker than I expected. <laughs> hey everyone, it's me, Aaron. And I'm Michelle. And our camera is way too high up. Nope. I'm just gonna stand like this the whole time. Good luck. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, so Thanks yeah. for making me feel shorter than I already am. <laughs> but yes, so it begins. <laughs> the 2018 edition of the Gauntlet of Garbage. Like, is it 2018 or is it I 2017? No. Because I, we're watching the movies from last year, but we're doing it this, this year, year. Yeah. so. I don't know what I called it last year. <laughs> we're watching bad movies, everybody. Yay! Yay. Because you, you guys demanded it. Yes, you uh, love seeing us angry about bad movies. Actually, in all honesty, I did this every year even before I had a YouTube channel. <laughs> yes, for anybody who doesn't know, every single year in January, I go back and I watch back to back to back to back all the films that people call the worst movies of the previous year. And I do this because, honestly, I kind of find it healthy to do this. I feel like you need to go out there and cleanse your palate at least once a year. <laughs> Just let yourself know what really were the worst movies of the year because it drives me insane when okay films, mediocre films, passable films, just, eh, it's, it's fine, those kind of movies come out and movie snobs out there just go, this is clearly one of the worst things <laughs> I've ever seen. It's like, well, then you don't watch enough movies. If you actually sit down... You don't watch enough bad movies. <laughs> no, you just don't watch enough movies, period. Uh, if you actually go out there and watch what are actually some of the worst movies out there, it gives you a better appreciation for films that are just competent, for films that are just okay. Uh, you need to know where the bottom is. You can't really appreciate something that is good until you know what is bad. Mm -hmm. Like. So many people out there are calling Star Wars The Last Jedi the worst film of the year. And it's like, you whiny ass fanboys out there need to actually watch movies that don't involve space wizards, okay? <laughs> you need to watch other films out there, all right? That film is pretty darn good. And I'm just comparing that to okay films. It's a fucking masterpiece when you compare it to terrible films. And that's what we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. We're going to actually be sitting down and watching several, several of the worst films of the year. And we're kicking it off with The Book of Henry, which a lot of you might have forgotten existed. I know I did. <laughs> but it is the winner of the what the fuck were you thinking award of 2017? Exactly, like the trailers like completely throw you off like you think. Yeah, um, <laughs> for everybody who has not heard what this movie is about, first off on the post Geek Out reactions, which is what we're basically doing here, we always go into spoiler territory because it's just a discussion between us about what we just watched. Mm -hmm. So if you have no idea what this movie is about, stop now <laughs> and go on YouTube, which you're probably already on, <laughs> And look up the trailer for this film. <laughs> then come back. <laughs> okay, have an idea in your head about what this movie is actually about? Oh, also, look up the movie poster for it. Future me, put the movie poster right here. <laughs> Doesn't this look like some fun, whimsical Steven Spielberg crap? It does, like, and that's exactly, it's like you expect this to be, <laughs> you expect it to be like some heartwarming, Oscar sweeping movie of the year. I wouldn't say Oscar sweeping, but <laughs> make your mom feel good kind of film. <laughs> it, it advertises itself as a mom film. As like, well, my mom's in from out of town, we gotta go and see a movie. <laughs> This looks like it'll be totally heartwarming and unoffensive. Like, like the next Billy Elliot or something yeah. like that. I mean, it does <laughs> mention in the trailer the whole we have to murder the next door neighbor plot. <laughs> which is weird. However, it goes on from there. That is a weird thing. That you watch the trailer and it's like, okay, well, it seems odd but you know okay there have been like family films that get pretty dark like this there have been films uh starring younger characters out there that do get dark like this oh my god so anyway <laughs> this film begins and it stars naomi watts as this mom which i kept trying to figure out who that was in the lead role this entire time it was naomi watts which makes me feel sad <laughs> uh but it stars naomi watts who is this single mom, 
and she's living in a big nice house she's got two kids and she's working as a waitress and the reason why she's able to afford being a waitress is because her son Henry is a super genius who plays the stock market and they have like six hundred thousand dollars in their bank account because like he just is that good at the stock market he is a robot like it is shocking what they decide how they decided to write this guy he is not a normal child genius he handles all the responsibilities in the house like he is a 40 year old he, it's almost like he has benjamin button disease yeah and i they kept expecting that to be the twist and the and the and his mom oh i know what you're going to do <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second we got built up to that uh, but, but the thing is they treat him in this room like he's the parent yeah. and their mom is the child because he is handling like the bills, their bank account, budgeting, their, uh, bouncing their checkbook. He handles all the car payments. He handles, um, as I said, the stock market income, which has made them like insanely wealthy. <laughs> and she just sits around playing video games and getting drunk with her friends all day long. It's kind of disturbing. Yeah. Uh, which... It's really upsetting knowing that, like, this kid is more responsible than the parent. Like, she's like cursing in front of their younger child, and then Henry has to remind her, don't curse in front of him. That's like, a bad I feel influence. Like, like the C CPA should have came in and, like, taken the mom away because she's just that <laughs> shitty. <laughs> Oh, I thought you meant they should have come in and taken the mom away because they were mistaken the mom for the child. It's like, <laughs> you're clearly too young to be a parent. Let's get this unusually large child out of your house. <laughs> That'll yeah. work too. <laughs> it's really kind of messed up. And it's not just her. It's like her friend played by friend, Sarah Silverman. Which was sad. Yeah. Uh, her, her friend, but the thing is, her friend is a wreck. She's an alcoholic. But, but she has no responsibility. No, she, she has no child. She has two children, and she's just like, yeah, whatever, my younger child can handle all this. And there's a moment in here in which her boss, played by, um, oh God, he plays Dewey on the new DuckTales, um, and he's on Saturday Night Live. God, what is his name? Budge, I'm forgetting it. Um, Billy Conley, I think that's his name. No, wait, that's not it. That's a totally different actor. <laughs> you want to look up IMDb? No, it's fine. You guys know who I'm talking about. Uh, but he's in here as her boss. He goes, if it'd be easier for you, I can set you up with direct deposit. And she goes, oh, I don't know. I'm going to have to talk to Henry about that. He goes, you have to talk to your 11-year-old <laughs> about that? And she's like, no. like." No, no she, she says, well, he's a genius. Yeah. It's like that's. <laughs> but she gets that look on her face like, doesn't everyone? Doesn't like, everyone have a prodigy 11-year-old child to do everything for them? Just yeah. me? Oh, okay. It's so... <laughs> whenever people call her out on this stuff, it makes it seem like the movie realizes how fucked up it is, but it's not willing to commit to that. Um, like it's like they're saying like the movie is like oh isn't this funny because she's supposed to be responsible. It's like no that's disturbing. It's yeah here's the thing, if this was a children's film like a 1980s children's film mm -hmm. in which the parent was the goofy screw up but the kid's the smart one and knows everything and it had that tone to it yeah you could make this work. But it does not have that tone. It to has it. a serious tone to yeah, this. Yeah and. And if it was supposed to be silly like that, they Henry, would not have the second plot of this film pop up. Also, Henry would have had way more personality. Yeah, Henry is, as I said, he's one of the most unlikable characters of the year <laughs> because he has zero personality. You guys, at, I mentioned Star Wars at the beginning. To all you people out there, it's like, oh, Ray is such a Mary Sue. Sit down and watch the book of fucking <laughs> Henry. This is a guy who is a genius at everything, has hundreds of thousands of dollars that he's earned at the age of 11, and there is nothing to him. No, he, he is just walking perfection. And he, like the thing is, like the kids in the school is like, if that was an actual school, an actual public school in the real world, Henry would have gotten his ass kicked so many times. No one doesn't like this guy. That's the other thing that drove me nuts. There's a moment in which he has to go to the hospital. I won't say for why. There's something coming up in the layer. There's a moment when he goes to the hospital, and there's this kid in his class. The film opens on this kid staying up in front of the school, going, "My goal in life." is to become an Olympic dodgeball player because then that would make everyone happy. <laughs> and I was like, is he four? What is wrong with this guy? And then you find out he's in the same class as Henry and they made this kid really like childish to try and like show how mature Henry was. Again, he's 11. 
this kid is acting like he's three. And then, then it comes to that moment, it was like, we have to send cars to Henry in the hospital. And that kid goes, but Henry's gonna be okay, right? I mean, he's Henry. Nothing bad can happen to him, right? <laughs> Why do any of you like this kid? All he does is just prove how smarter he is than you, which I'm not saying you should hate people for that. No, I'm but just saying your children, I know how children work. Yes, they beat up nerds. Yes, <laughs> and Henry is nothing but a nerd. There's a moment in here in which his younger brother gets his ass kicked for no reason at no, all. No, the bully says, oh, he's nothing. You're the smart one, but this guy, your brother is nothing. It's like, oh, I must have been in the, in the kitchen during that moment. Yep, yeah, and I'm like, his so name, okay, no, Peter. That's the younger brother's that's name. Younger brother's like name. he should be your friend because you are just like him. If anything, you should be ganging up on his brother for being a smart ass. That <laughs> makes no fucking sense. That the bully would beat up not the smart kid, but his younger brother because he's not as smart as the smart kid. <laughs> what school is this? This is like going. This is like some weird fantasy and fantasy dream that people have about going to the big fancy school where the <laughs> where the smart people are finally appreciated. No, this is like every parent's wet dream to have a kid like Henry who's yeah. smart and perfect at everything and is and is friends with all the kids at school and have no troubles like <laughs> Man, I'm currently reading a book called uh, The Best We Could Do, and it's about a woman who gives birth to her first child, and it's not treated as this big, wonderful thing. It's treated as, oh my god, I have responsibilities now, and I'm just con <laughs> comparing it to this crap, and we're just like, she had a child and then just clocked the fudge out, because this baby could probably change his own diapers. Yeah. <laughs> God, did you ever have to do anything responsible in your life? Um, like, what did she do, like, before she had Henry? She had the husband there, I'm guessing, but we never find out, like, what happened we to the never, dad. We know, the no. dad's out of the picture. We know that the dad's still alive because they mentioned alimony checks in here at one point, but, yeah, we don't know what happened to him. He's just gone. <laughs> Is the dad a super genius? Is that where this all came from? Why did the super genius fall in love with the girl who apparently doesn't give a crap about responsibilities? <laughs> Um, well, she was really hot back then. <laughs> it, it is Naomi Watts. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Man, like, okay. I like to think that, oh, Henry is such a genius, I should have another child and he'll be a genius too. Oh. Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Which I will say, the actor playing the younger brother, really darn good. Yeah, he actually acts like a little kid. Like, yeah, and he actually like, but not like annoyingly so, no, like accurately. Like accurate, actual kid. Especially for the stuff that he ends up going through in this film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he actually portrays that well. Um, but the thing is, you mentioned like, she just doesn't care about the younger brother. Man, that is totally true. The mom keeps forgetting she has a second kid. <laughs> and again, the thing is, the movie doesn't forget that. The movie doesn't like forget to follow this kid around no. and forget that he's in the film. The kid's still in the film, but the mom is constantly like, what other kid? Oh shoot, okay, all right, yeah, all right. <laughs> like, why have... am I supposed to like you? I, why am I supposed to like anybody in here other than the little brother? Like Henry is like more caring towards his little brother. Yeah, and like, well that's because Henry's basically the dad of this family made up of his mom daughter yeah, and his of, younger brother son. Yeah, speaking of which, there was like the scene where like they were like in like a queen size bed or something. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, this is one of the things I wanted to build up to. Yeah, it's like... Uh, again, before we get into the really creepy shit, it feels like this movie wants to try and be one of those lighthearted 80s things because not only is Henry insanely smart, he's also kind of quirky because he builds like Ruth Goldberg machines oh, on the yeah. house. And also like there's a moment in which the little brother is upset with him and goes, okay, I bet I can, I bet I can make you smile. And then he puts on these aviator goggles, an aviator hat, and he builds like a fan blowing like fake snow throughout the house. And he's pretending to climb a mountain with yeah. plungers. And like this in a, one of those cheesy 80s kids films where the kid is supposed to be the smart one because it's made for children who are watching this film and connecting with the child. Yeah, this would be charming and fun as heck. This movie does not have this tone. This movie is nothing but look at how amazing Henry is and here's all this serious horrible crap going on around him. <laughs> and speaking of the tone in this fucking film, we mentioned how creepy it is that Henry acts like the adult and the mom acts like the child, that's just really disturbing to see. There is a moment in which it shows them 
in a queen size bed together. She's curled up there next to him like this. And, and Henry he's is just like with doing a, bills. Yeah, on his laptop and stuff. So And I was looking at it like, okay, maybe, maybe it's just me. And then I leaned over to you and all I said was, is it just me or and you went, yes. <laughs> It has like a weird pedophilic tone to pedophilic it. Pedophilic incestual. It does. Like, I was like, please tell me I'm not just reading too much into this. And you got it too. Nailed it. But then later on in this film, mm. Sarah Silverman's character keeps constantly like making fun of Henry. She keeps calling him Hank, calling him the wrong name on purpose. Yeah. And Henry always makes fun of her. Like, they have this like back and forth, like just poking fun at each yeah. other nature. There's a moment, like I said, Henry goes to the hospital at one scene. She comes by and she's concerned about him. And he's like, listen. This relationship is called this, and it gives out this very long, complex term. And it's a relationship in which people say the opposite of what they mean because they can't actually express the way in which they truly do mean. I feel that sums up our relationship completely well. I am speaking far more naturally than he actually talks yeah. in this moment. And then she's like, oh, I'm gonna miss you, Henry. Then she leans in and kisses him on the mouth. Not like, hmm, but like. An actual mm, sensual, like, like, and I was just like. <sighs> we both were going, oh my God. <sighs> Oh, uh, unclean. Uh, oh, I, Jesus Christ. Like, imagine if we saw this in theaters with other people. I actually had that thought. I wanted to know how that audience would react in that moment. <laughs> like, I probably would. Because, uh, like, <laughs> uh, ooh, I mean. God, Jesus. check this motherfucker's search history. The guy who wrote and directed this, Colin Trevorrow, Check this motherfucker's history, okay? Like, just because Henry acts like an adult does not mean he is an adult. He is still a child. And just because- And you just made us watch Sarah fucking Silverman make out with an 11-year-old. Well, uh. well, on his deathbed, mind you. <laughs> okay, that's the next thing that we need to get into. So, come the moment in this film in which Patrick just starts yelling out, Mom! Mom! Wait, Patrick or Peter? Peter. Okay. Uh, even you forget the kid's name. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so bad I'm terrible him. with names, though. You know that. <laughs> uh, he, but she just starts yelling out, Mom! Mom! He, she comes right in, and Henry, this is halfway through the film, Henry is on the floor. I'm gonna, uh, having he, a like, seizure. Having a seizure. And then they pick him up, they take him to the hospital, and they let him know, yeah, he's got brain cancer. And it's a big one. Okay. You remember that trailer you just watched? How it had nothing to do with this at <laughs> all? This happens halfway through this film, and Henry spends the rest of the next couple minutes of this film just writing in his notebook, just making plans, just preparing the financial future of his family, and then the film just has him die. The title fucking character of this movie dies halfway through the film. Well, the movie isn't about Henry, it's about his book. book. Why did Henry write a book? Well... Because his mom can't do shit. No. <laughs> it's because well, Henry yeah, but... saw their next door neighbor, who is the chief of police, sexually assault his daughter. And Henry is the only one who believes this, and the only one who is out there trying to save this girl's life. And he goes to everyone that he can. He can't go to the Child Protective Services because it's run by this guy's brother. So there's nothing that they're going to do. And then he goes to like the principal. And again, he acts like he's 40 fucking years old. Yeah. He walks into the principal's office and goes, damn it, Janet, how come you haven't done anything yet? And like starts throwing papers around. And I was like, it's like he just walked into his commanding officer's, <laughs> like the chief of police's office, and like, damn it, man, you gotta get the press off my back. I'm trying to solve this case as best as I can. I was like, you're 11. You just walked out of a classroom where they were serving donuts for some kid's birthday. <laughs> so, that, and here's the thing. Again, if you wanted to make this a comedy, and the joke was how old this kid acts, Fine, and you want to make it a charming thing, but he's going to talk to the principal about this girl who's being sexually assaulted by her father. Am I supposed to laugh at you walking into the principal's office and going, damn it, Janet, how come you haven't done anything? Because that should be funny, except when you put it in the fucking context of what it's about, 
Then it's horrifying. It is. It's, well, again, this whole movie is like, I don't know if you're trying to be funny. And a lot of the, like, charming shit that we talked about earlier, like the Ruth Goldberg machines. I was at Ruth Bader Ginsburg machine. <laughs> the Ruth Goldberg machines. That's just a long contraption that just slams the gavel down. Um, uh, but that and, like, him pretending to climb yeah. for his younger brother. All this is after we know the guy next door is, like, sexually assaulting his daughter. So, how am I supposed to find this movie charming? Do you know what movie you're fucking making at this point? And, like, here's the thing, is, like, you actually kind of, like, see him, like, planning out the murder? Mur yeah, because yeah. that's the thing. Henry then decides, okay, no one's gonna do anything about this. I'm gonna have to kill him. I'm going to have to kill my next door neighbor. Like, he sneaks around to, like, the gun shop. Yeah, he sneaks into a gun shop and starts, like, taking down notes of, like, how to order a gun, like, what type he should order, this kind of stuff. It's like, I think you were, like, in the kitchen getting a drink, but, like, during, like, there was a scene where, like, he was at the bridge and he was, like, judging how, how deep it is. He's like, is he, is he planning? Disposing the body? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that. I was like, holy shit. Holy shit, yeah. This is, like... And it's like, it didn't even start at that point. In the opening credits, you see like these scribbles, like in the opening credits, there's Again, scribbles in his book and stuff everything. Stuff that's supposed to seem charming. Yes, like, oh, this flying machine and everything. And then suddenly you see like a picture of a gun being put, taken apart with like an analyzer. Like, and it's got like, boop, 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 yeah. like that 80s charming like kids film <laughs> music in there. And it's like, and then you see like a drawing of a gun. It's like, whoa, what the fuck? But it goes by so fast. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. Let's see, okay, there's a portrait of Henry, he's wearing the goofy goggles that we're gonna see later in the film. There's a flying machine, there's his Ruth, his Ruth Goldberg machine, there's a gun, there's his younger brother, wait, what? <laughs> um, there's a map of the gun shop, wait, what? <laughs> what's happening now? What? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so yeah, he starts then planning out the murder of his next door neighbor. And this entire film, it's just so alarming that it's like, you're trying to be like a goofy 80s kids film, but then he's attempting to murder his next door neighbor who is sexually assaulting his fucking daughter. There is a huge difference between Macaulay Coke and setting up traps for burglars and this kid trying to murder a child molester. Right. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth because all I kept thinking was like, this is the dark, gritty, real world reboot of Home Alone. <laughs> This is someone who saw Home Alone and went, why is everyone laughing at this brilliant concept? This is something that is not being taken as seriously as it absolutely should. I will take this concept and put it in the correct light that it should actually be portrayed in. Dark, gritty, real world. Like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? And by the way, I mentioned, I mentioned Star Wars several times on this. I should point out the director of this film, who is a guy who has been reported multiple times for being very difficult to work with on the set. He was supposed to direct episode nine. His ass got dropped right after this. <laughs> Thank God. Um, Cause this isn't even like a well shot film. Um, but yeah, there's nothing really good about this. But as I said, okay, a film with two totally different tones <laughs> Or not even that, it's got one tone to it, but it thinks it has two. It's attempting to, and it's not doing it, which makes <laughs> all the scenes outside that shouldn't be the one weird dark tone just seem totally out of place. It then leads up to out of nowhere, oh, Henry's dead. All that that was built up, it's, yeah, he's dead now. <laughs> but his mom reads his notebook and Henry wrote all this and recorded step-by-step -step instructions on an audio cassette tape. Tell his mom, listen, he's, ki he's sexually assaulting his daughter. The police won't do anything. You have to kill him yourself. And she's like, well, why can't we just go to the police? And then she turns to a page. Why you can't go to the police? Like, well, there's clearly something else we can do. Turns page. Why there is nothing else you can do. Like, it's funny because, like, not only did he, like, write down reasons why, but he also recorded himself telling her. Yes. Like, just in case, like, she's, like, too dumb to read. Which <laughs> could be a thing in this film. And here's the thing. She's supposed to be a children's book writer. Yeah, she is. 
That's like her goal in life is to write children's books. Like, okay, I get it. You act childish because you want to like, you know, do enhance your work or something. But like, there's a huge difference between being like, she, she is fucking incompetent. Yeah, there's a difference between being silly and being absolutely incompetent. Yeah, uh, but so he's trying to send his weird mother daughter <laughs> through ghost messages to murder their next door neighbor. That's what this movie's about, everybody. Who the fuck thought this was a good idea? And she has to go around and follow step by step the instructions, and she's listening to the instructions, and he's telling her things like, okay, go do this now, go do that. As if he is watching her through a telescope. Yeah. And there's one moment in here in which he goes, the next ATM is down the street on your right. Then she walks to her left, your other right. Then she comes walking back and is like, how fucking dumb is it that your mom doesn't know left from right? And B, you, you're fucking with us. You're still alive. You faked your death. As, and you're watching this all through a telescope because there's no fucking way. And C, number three, C. Again, what fucking tone is this movie supposed to be? How on earth are you going to put a joke like, oh, my mom can't tell her left from her right in there. At a moment when your mom is trying to follow your dead child's instructions <laughs> to murder someone. The fuck? The fuck? <laughs> What the fuck? This, there's no words to sum up how crazy <laughs> this film is and none of it works. This is a movie where it really feels like at any moment someone should have just looked at that script and just gone, where's the real movie? <laughs> this, this is one of the most genius cons I've ever seen. Like if you actually thought we were gonna make that, can you imagine, where's the real script? <laughs> Because this is the thing where if someone pitched to you this idea, you'd slap the shit out of them. It's crazy to think about this. Um, but the thing is, this is a guy, the director and the writer of this film, was a guy who was like a Steven Spielberg protege. Like Steven Spielberg stood up for him and was like, no, nah, that's my guy. Trust me, we got him. Spielberg has dropped this motherfucker. Like Spielberg <laughs> wants nothing new with him and I think it has a lot to do with this film. Um, so yeah, this all leads up to a big talent show in which she has to go and drop the children off, like her next door neighbor's daughter and her youngest son. The next door neighbor's daughter who's being molested. Yeah, never forget that. <laughs> yes. Uh, which by the way, I don't think she, you had to point this out to me, I don't think they actually said the next door neighbor daughter's name until like- Halfway two, through no, or like not like, even, like two it's thirds? It's two thirds of the way. It's like long into this film. Um, which kind of proves to me that it's like, oh, so the daughter has no personality at all. Like, there's nothing to her. No, she's just an object. She's just the victim, yeah. The victim. Yeah. Uh, she's just the thing that has to be protected. Yeah, like, the mom goes up to say, hey, sweetie, how you doing? She always calls her sweetie and not by her actual yeah. name. It wasn't until, like, late in this film when, like, they're looking through the notebook and it's like, you have to go and save Jessica or whatever like her Christina, name was. Christina. Christina, yeah. I think it was, yeah. And it was like... Oh, I guess that's what it is. All right, cool. Uh, they might have said it like once early on, but then aside from that, like it is an afterthought who she is. You know, I just realized like literally no one has a rememberable name except for Henry in this movie. And that's just, th you know you did a bad job when you can't even remember in like all... any of the character's name except for the one <laughs> whose name is in the title. I was about to say, in all fairness, <laughs> if his name wasn't in the title, would you remember it? No, you would because everybody keeps saying Henry, but Henry, well, Henry would know to. I have to ask Henry about this. Uh, uh, WW8, like, what, what would Henry what do? Would Henry do? <laughs> Murder the next door neighbor because this kid has no sense of, like, all right. So, this all then leads up to the talent show. She drops the kids off, then she leaves, and she, like, drives back, plans a trap for the next door neighbor, lures him out of the house. He then goes into the woods where she has the shot lined up, and, like, Henry's going, take the shot, mom. Take the shot now. Take it now, mom. Uh, there's only one moment in which I actually kind of enjoyed that like dialogue in the head mm -hmm. in which she sh she was practicing shooting and she shot the target and then at that moment he goes way to go mom you finally did it and I was like how the fuck would you know she actually got in that one and then she stops and she talks to herself a little bit and then you hear Henry go wow another great shot mom. <laughs> I was like okay finally they admit this is fucking would not work as well as they think it would. All right, but like here's the thing it's like 
when she was when she was lined up to like take the shot and like kill him, like she accidentally like triggers like one of his Rube Goldberg machines. That's yeah. This all leads up to when she's about to shoot the next door neighbor. She then like backs up, triggers a Rube Goldberg machine, stuff starts going flying around, moving all around, and then it hits a thing and it causes just all these photos of Henry to fall down. Like as, yeah, and and she... and I was like, <laughs> okay, either. Either Henry put that there because he knew his mom would have doubts and she needed like a reminder of why she should do this. So he set up like a reminder of, hey, I'm dead and this is my final wish kind of a thing. But it only worked because she stumbled back a little bit. So how on earth would he then know that she would stumble? Like, no way could you plan for that shit. It's like, shit. my mom is not only stupid, but also a klutz. I know she's going to have stumbled backwards At and this trigger. exact moment, while she's standing <laughs> in this exact situation, I know that will take this machine exactly this long to trigger the photos, which would remind her at the exact moment when she has to line the shot up. It's like, are you... No. <laughs> Fucking no. But, like... But... <laughs> or the other explanation is that he didn't plan that... And he just built a Ruth Goldberg machine for himself in his yeah, clubhouse. Yeah, which is like, why would you do Of this? just photos of himself. Like, he made, a, he made a Ruth Goldberg machine that would, like, put extra cream in, like, the, uh, the hostess cupcakes. Mm -hmm. And, like, that is something a little kid would do. Yeah. A little kid would not make... Again, matching that, like, goofy 80s kids film yeah. tone. That it feels like this movie is trying to go for at times. Yeah, and a little kid would not just have a Rube Goldberg machine to like open up a bunch of pictures of himself as a baby. Like, yeah, if anything... why would he want to remind himself of what he was like as a baby? Because, so, because again, I can't fucking imagine him planning even as much of a walking fucking deus ex machina machine as this kid <laughs> is. I can't imagine him going, my mom would trip at this exact moment when she's lining up this shot and I need to play something here in order to activate this thing to go this way. I can't imagine him even going that far. <sighs> but there's no other explanation for it other than it would reveal the photos to her to make her go, this is my son's dying wish, I'll shoot. But instead, it makes her go, no, you're a child. And then, like, good. Like, the whole thing about this is she has to learn to realize I'm the fucking adult in this situation. Like, I, f I feel like that's the what the movie... I feel like the movie was trying to say, oh, this is a huge character development. But for me, it's like, she should have been like that the whole fucking time. Yes. That's not character development. That's like common sense. And Just if that is your character arc that you need to get, learn to become an adult, setting up the murder of your <laughs> next door neighbor is not the thing that needs to motivate <laughs> you into doing that shit. This to me, it really feels like this is supposed to be like some Kafka-esque stuff. Like, you know the Kafka book Metamorphosis? Uh -huh. Which is all about this son who does everything for the family, for his sister and his two parents. He does everything for them. They just stay at home and he just goes out and he works his ass off and he makes sure that they have a nice life and all this. And then one day the son just turns into a giant cockroach. And it's all about this family now having to deal with the fact that they just have a giant cockroach living in their <laughs> house. And it follows like the torment of this guy living <laughs> as a cockroach. It follows his suffering. It follows him like he gets like part of his body crushed at one point and now he's just living like <gasps> as this giant cockroach barely struggling to like move around. Like he doesn't know what to eat anymore. It is a horrifying tale. And I read that in high school and I was just like, oh my God, this is terrifying. And at the end of it, and I was really digging the book, but then it got up to the end of it. And at the end of it, they kill the son. And they walk out and they're like, we're free. We can finally move on. And I was like, what the fuck was the <laughs> point of this? And my English teacher at the time told me the point of the book is that the parents and the sister were basically slaves to their son because he was doing everything for them. This is the thing that made them realize they have to go out there and actually do things for themselves and actually be functioning adults. I went, fuck this book. <laughs> fuck this. This guy, Henry, is at least kind of a future serial killer. <laughs> like, this seems like it could have been the, uh, the prequel to Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Um, Henry didn't die. He turned into a giant cockroach. <laughs> but, at, but in Metamorphosis, I was like... This guy was a nice guy. He was doing good stuff. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't the better story be about him realizing, oh, my family's just mooching off me. Fuck them. I'm going to leave and force them to actually grow up and I'm gonna go and live my own life rather than being a slave to having to constantly take care of them. 
Wouldn't that have been a better story? No, it's supposed to be an uplifting ending to the Metamorphosis because the guy who was nice and helping the family died so now they can actually go and become adults with themselves. That's kind of what this movie yeah. is. And again, same reaction that I had in Metamorphosis. Fuck this movie. <laughs> Fuck it. Like, it really does feel like that's what this was supposed to be. Um, like except <laughs> that, as I said, Henry, I don't give a shit about Henry. Henry is the most <laughs> robotic Gary Stu character of mm -hmm. all time. Like, he is just some... Uh, uh, the fact that even... It almost feels like Henry is like a fantasy sequence of somebody. Uh, I might be reading too much into it, but the fact that, like... Sarah Solman is making out with him and he is the smartest precious guy alive and everyone at school loves him <laughs> and if he has to die then oh oh it's the saddest thing ever isn't it like not really you've given us no reason to like this guy other than he's smart that's it and he's not even believably smart. No. He is weird, creepy ass yeah, smart. Yeah, like if he if it was like a kid with like Asperger's or autism, like someone who's like really intelligent but like has difficulty taking care of themselves. If, yeah, if he had like some kind like of some like- Like some sort of quirk or a flaw or- Something like, to him that made it go, well, here's like his struggle. Like more human? If he had a struggle, yeah. that's what it is. His struggle is, can I save the neighbor girl? Yeah. Uh, that's not your struggle. That's the neighbor girl struggle. Tell us her story. Mm -hmm. She should be the hero of this fucking thing. Um, or at least have more fucking personality yes. in here. Uh, she is non-existent other than I do ballet. And at the end of this, she does a ballet sequence, which makes the principal go, oh, she clearly is being Melissa. I should have reported that poor, that terrible, terrible man. Like, like how, how does like do, dancing ballet, like unless it was like interpretive dance and like the principal found out through that, it's like, oh no. This is, <laughs> This is her confession. I must take this dance to the police. <laughs> By the end of this, like, Naomi Watts decides, I can't kill him because you're a child and this is crazy. And it was like, yes, thank you. It took you this long to figure that out? Because <laughs> the rest of us figured out long ago. But then he can, but then he sees her out there with a gun and she just goes, I know what you've been doing. I'm going to make sure that everybody knows. And he's like, yeah, well, no one's going to believe you. He's like, yeah, well, I'm a nobody. I can afford a scandal. Can you? I was like, okay, well, it's good to see her actually staying up there. Yeah, also she has, like, billions of dollars, so, like, she can, like, get away with other shit. Not like, billions, but hundreds of thousands. Hundred, yeah. yeah, like, so she, she can, can pick up and move. Yeah, and get a good lawyer. Yeah. Um, but, and then the principal reports this, and so then he goes back home, and then the police pull up to his front door. Which, again, the reason this didn't work in the first place is because he was the chief of police... Henry actually lined out several reasons why you can't call the cops about yeah. this. So at the end, it turns out Henry was wrong and you could just call the cops? Why didn't you just call the fucking cops? Um, like, I thought, like, the reason why Henry couldn't call the cops is because he was a kid and, and like... Yeah. And, like, he needed an adult to call the I guess cops. In all, I guess in all fairness, the principal reporting this does have more weight than he does. So yeah. That's fair. Um, but, yeah, and then it just, like, zooms out from the house... And then you just hear a gunshot, and we find out, oh, he committed suicide, so nobody would know what he was doing with his daughter. And earlier in this film, Naomi Watts uh, forges his signature onto next of kin documents so that if he dies, she gets custody of the daughter. And at the end of this, you see her then tucking her new daughter into bed next to her son. And there's a moment earlier on in this film in which he's, she's tucking in uh, Henry and the younger son, and she says to Henry, good night, Enchirito number one. Enchilada. Enchilada. <laughs> I don't think Enchirito. I think Enchirito is something that Taco Bell invented. <laughs> good night, Enchilada number one. And then she goes over to kid number two, good night, Enchilada <laughs> number two. And then he goes, why do I have to be number two? And he's like, well, because you were born last. And then like, he goes, it's old. okay, you can be Enchilada number one. And then at the end of this, She's tucking in her son and goes, good night, Inchilada, number one. And I was like, that's really fucking dark considering that you're now calling him that because Inchilada, number one, is dead. <laughs> that now there's no longer a competitor for title of it that he <laughs> won by, he won by decision, by technical knockout. It's like, you are my new Henry, now do yeah. my taxes for me. Yeah, it, <laughs> it does have this creepy moment of... Oh, good night. By the way, remember, your brother used to be enchilada number one, and he's fucking dead now. Okay? And then she tucks in, like, the other one, and before, like, Henry and his brother could never decide on, okay, do you want the nightlight on or off? Do you want the door open or closed? When she goes, and she leaves this time, she goes, on or off? 
on, door open and close, close, and both of them agree on it. I was like, it really does kind of have like that tone of metamorphosis of, yeah, you know what? Good thing that Henry's gone now. Yeah. They're, they're way happier without Henry. <laughs> She's a functioning adult. Yeah. And now he's got a big sister who agrees with him on everything. She's got a nice new home away from that terrible father of hers. Everything is okay now because Henry's dead. Like, <laughs> so was I supposed to like this kid or not? Jesus, this film is all over the goddamn place with its tones and not in like a forgivable way at all. These are not two tones that like, yeah, it's kind of jarring to have them together. Kind of jarring? It is fucking insulting. Like two complete polar opposites. <laughs> this is not oil and water. This is an oil tanker and the ocean. <laughs> it's destroying thousands of wildlife creatures, this film. All right, it is disgusting what this movie is yeah. at moments. And not just even like with the, you thought it was okay to have this goofy moment in here in a film that's about this thing? You thought that was okay? No, it then gets into the really disturbing stuff of like, oh, there's some like, there's some like pedophile stuff going yeah. on here. And not even the obvious pedophile stuff of the neighbor and his daughter. I'm talking with like Sarah Silverman. Yeah. I'm talking with like Naomi Watts in bed with her son. It's fucking creepy as shit. And I know some people are going to go it's like, oh, I'm a parent. And I let the kid like get in bed with me every now and again. Not like this, you don't. Again, mm. it does not have that no. fucking tone. It does not have the tone of, oh, the kid just wanted to like sleep in our bed once. All right, fine, whatever. No, it does have a tone of like, what are you thinking about, Henry? It's like, uh, uh, it's disgusting. Um, but then, and also, like, the fact that this film just halfway through the movie, where the fuck did this come from? Yeah. Who thought it was okay to kill your main character halfway through your fucking film? Uh, and no one in this is likable, except for the little brother. Mm -hmm. The little brother is the only one who has personality and is likable. Mm -hmm. Everyone else in here who has personality is like, go fuck yourself, personality. How dare you even ask me to like, like this They're character. either assholes or they're like completely blank slates. They're assholes or they're robotic, like, <laughs> I don't, you're not real. You're not <laughs> fucking real at all. You're way too perfect. Henry is so fucking perfect. It is disturbing that someone wrote it on paper. That, Maybe that's the reason why he had to die. He's like, you're too perfect. You're too good for this world. Yeah. <laughs> he died for our sins. <laughs> God, the only thing this movie is missing is Henry carrying a giant cross out of the hospital at one point. Although he did leave the hospital at one point. He was sneaky. <laughs> this kid had surgery on his brain, head was wrapped in bandages, was wearing the, uh, what do you call them, the gowns, the hospital gowns. Yeah. And yet he was still sneaking out of the hospital at night with no one stopping him. I'll admit, I've been to some shit hospitals, but I've never seen one where an 11 year old kid could just get up and walk out of the hospital at, with bandages over his head and in a gown and no one would go, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, you need to be in a wheelchair if we're going to escort you out here. It's a legal thing. We can't, um, huh. but he was sneaking out there every night to plan for that, for how his mom would murder this guy. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And then at the end of it, like the fact that like she realizes, no, Henry was a child, I can't do this. It's also still just kind of like, this does not feel earned. No. This does not feel like this is what this movie was leading towards. Uh, it's like, no, Henry's still a child. Well, they sh he should have fucking acted like it. <laughs> yeah. Your, ch your son was not a child. <laughs> Probably not ever. This was an uh, this was an abomination against God. What Henry <laughs> was, he was not made by nature. <laughs> he was made in a fucking like mad scientist lab out of like. Uh, that's half, what her. That's what half she... the computer, half the internet was what his brain was. He was some weird mixture of science and man. Yes, his father was actually a scientist that uh, that the mom married, and like I really Peter is her actual like biological son. Didn't you expect like a post credit scene of like, uh, God, what the fuck is that guy's name? Um, Stephen Hawking's to come to Henry's <laughs> funeral, like. <laughs> I'll never get to see my son. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just anything like that. Um, yeah, this film is a failure on every goddamn level. <laughs> I really, I'm trying to think of anything that I like in here other than the younger brother. 
But even he has a creepy ass scene at the talent show in which he comes up there and he goes, I'm going to perform a magic trick. My brother Henry died, but he's in this box right now and he's gonna come back and join us right now. And what pops out of the box is a bunch of like snowflakes. Like that, the like, confetti. The confetti that his brother made when he was trying to like make his brother smile. I was like, that's sweet. But the weird ass tone that this movie has, I would not be shocked if he popped out of there like a jack in the box. <laughs> Like if he, or if he popped out of there and revealed, still alive motherfuckers, did my mom learn the lesson to not kill the neighbor and that she should actually be more of an adult? Nailed it, Henry motherfucker. No, it's like he pops out and he had like the walkie talkie. He's like, yeah, I was not, that was not a recording. I was telling you the, all the instructions from inside this box. <laughs> I've got daredevil senses now. I could re, I could hear you miles away from inside this box. Yeah, being inside this dark box enhanced all my <laughs> other senses. <laughs> See, the real lesson was that I, Henry, could improve even more than I already was. <laughs> now I'm superhuman. <laughs> And you can be too with my self-help book. That's the real book of Henry. <laughs> the Gauntlet of Garbage is off to a rousing start this year. <laughs> uh, but Honestly, like Henry is such a genius, I'm surprised he didn't do brain surgery on himself. <laughs> there is a fucking scene in here. There is a scene. There is a moment after they, the doctor tells him, you have something in your brain and it's bad and we're gonna have to, and he goes, give it to me straight, doc. <laughs> It's clearly this, 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 this. And the doctor's like, yeah. Let me see my charts. Mm, mm, mm. I was like, <laughs> I really thought he was going to like record instructions for the doctor <laughs> on how to operate on. I actually thought that would be a scene in this movie. Uh, and by the way, we both knew the twist that Henry dies before watching this. I cannot fucking imagine what this movie is like for people who didn't know that. If you went into this movie cold, I cannot imagine Oof. how jarring that is of, who the fuck thought this was okay? <laughs> who thought this was the way to tell a story? Uh, yeah, man. <sighs> this, as far as like being made, it's not the worst film of the No. Year. Obviously not. Like it's you know it's competently shot. I didn't say I said it wasn't well shot, but it's not poorly shot. It's like it does the job. It is a competent looking film. The acting is competent. Everything in here is kind of competent, except the script, which is so mind-bogglingly insane. It's not even stupid. I'm not gonna say stupid. It's just one of those things. Like I honestly can't believe that you didn't show this to someone and they immediately throw this in the fucking fire and went, you can never show this to anyone. <laughs> Ever. Like the amount of what the fuckery in this movie yeah. is incomprehensible. <laughs> if one of these what the fuck things was in a film, I would be pointing at and going, how did nobody like tell you to take this out of the film? This whole film is nothing but what the fuck moments. Mm -hmm. Like Henry being this robotic, someone should have called out what the fuck on that. Henry dying halfway through this film, someone should have called out what the fuck on that. This film having that weird 80s kids film sense to it. I'm not even gonna say tone because it doesn't have that tone, but then the hard, the hard like reality of other moments of this film, someone should have called what the fuck on that. There's so many things in this film that people, should, I'm getting so angry at this. I'm literally fighting back hiccups right now. <laughs> it's been a long time since that's happened. Um, yeah, it's just so jarring to think about the fact that any of these. Oh god, the the Sarah Silverman kissing him on the mouth. Yeah. Lord. What the fuck? Yeah. Someone should have called that. Any single one of these things are something that somebody should have pointed at and went, what the fuck are you doing? This entire film is nothing but that. Over and over and over again. It's stunning. But it's not gonna be my worst of the year. <laughs> There's worse stuff out there. Oh yeah. And we will find it on the Gauntlet of Garbage. We're gonna be doing this for the next few weeks, so strap yourselves in. And if you want to see the rest of these videos and what they all lead up to our worst movies of the year list, hit that subscribe button and follow me on Twitter, Twitch, and Tumblr at Professor Thorgy. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Come back next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> this was a doozy.